Hello and welcome to the program. I am Bukola Koka. Nine people confirmed dead as gunmen attack a Gatu local government area of Benue State. Kogi State Governor swears in commissioners and special advisors. Thank you for staying tuned. Three days after the killing of 15 persons in Agatu local government area of Benue State, nine persons have been killed in Uboju community of Agatu on Wednesday night in a series of coordinated attacks by suspected herdsmen on Agatu communities. A former deputy chairman of Agatu local government area, Mr. John Ikulono, who spoke with our correspondent in a telephone conversation, he says nine corpses were recovered after the attack. Although the Benue State government and the police are yet to confirm the attacks which, has, which have persisted in Agatu areas in the last two weeks. Calls put through to the police public relations officer are yet to be returned and inquiries made on the police media WhatsApp group have not received any reply from the police spokesperson. The Kogi state governor, Mr. Usman Ududu, has charged the newly appointed commissioners in the state to discharge their duties as servant leaders with utmost sincerity, without fear or favor. Ududu gave the charge in Lokoja, the state capital, during the swearing-in of 17 commissioners as members of the state executive council. <laughs> Kogi State Governor Usman Ududo steps into the glass wall of the government house in Lokoja to perform his first official assignment, the swearing-in of members of his cabinet and some special advisors who will work with him over the next four years. The glass wall of the government house in Lokoja, the state capital, is filled with party faithful as well as family and friends of the new appointees, those that formerly occupied the positions, state legislators, members of the judiciary led by the chief judge of the state and the state deputy governor, Joel Oibo. Just before taking their oath, state chairman of the APC urges the newly appointed commissioners not to deviate from the laid down party standards in carrying out their duties. The commissioners and other appointees that is about to be sworn in my, as a party, is to appeal to every one of you that you must put in your best. Make sure you are in touch with the grassroots. That is the only way all progressive Congress can continue to win election. You must carry everybody along. Reach out to your people so that APC can be better for it. And from the Speaker of the State House of Assembly, there will be strict monitoring of the ministries to ensure they are not abandoning their duties. As legislators, those who saddle responsibility to oversee the activities of various ministries and parasitas, it will not be business as usual. We will, be, we will always come when the need arises for oversight. Please don't misunderstand us as which auntie is to keep you on your toes so that you deliver the needed dividend of democracy to our people. The oaths of office and allegiance is administered by the Solicitor General of the State, Falilatu Musa. On behalf of the commissioners that have been sworn in, 
and other political officials. We have said thank you, Your Excellency, and thank you to our leader, and thanks to the entire state that ours is to make sure that we move the state forward, we work assiduously to make sure that our state competes favorably with Lagos and other states. Governor Ododo appreciates the people for their unwavering support, urging them to remain united in the interest of peaceful coexistence. He also appeals for prayers for the new administration. I am part of you. The mandate is yours. This is your project. This is your structure. This is a foundation. You are part of those that lays it. Please, I urge you to pray for us to succeed. We shouldn't build a house and destroy it ourselves. I promise you, we are going to be your servants. All the commissioners and government officials, we are not, we are not a leader. We are the servant of our people. There are 17 commissioners altogether, five of whom are returning. The others are new faces appointed to help deliver on the mandate of Usman Ududu over the next four years. It's time for Nigerians to take seriously the issue of value reorientation as part of the steps towards repositioning the country among the Committee of Nations. This is according to the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mr. Mohamed Magaji, who has been explaining the significance of the newly launched National Value Charter. Mr. Magaji, who was a guest on our breakfast program, Sunrise Daily, believes the new charter will help in recovering national values that are fast being eroded. We've seen gradual erosion of our values as a nation. Um, those values that were bequeathed to us by our founding fathers uh, seem to be going away. And it's becoming so worrisome uh, to the extent that uh, immorality and lack of patriotism uh, appear to be uh, taking center stage uh, for people in this country, for those in government and those outside government. And so uh, all the issues around this country are issues that have to do with uh, lack of patriotism, lack of, you know, belief in the value system that uh, we should have as a country. And so we thought that uh, it is important we we'll all come back again, sit down, look at where we've gotten it wrong, retrace our steps, so that Nigeria can recover those lost values that made us a great nation once upon a time. There are a number of people who will point to a Singapore, a China, and a number of other countries and say there are serious punitive measures for anyone, especially leaders, who go against national values. Is there a plan in that direction for us in Nigeria? This national value charter we are talking about is not just for the citizen or for the ordinary person. It's also for the person who is also leading. You don't expect a minister or a government, any government functionary to go against traffic. You don't expect him to do what you have asked the citizens not to do. So it's a two-way thing. And that's the difference between this charter and what we have had previously. In the past, everybody says he wants the Nigerian citizen to be behave in this, in this direction. What is that person that is saying that? How is he also behaving? So this charter will hold both leaders and the citizens accountable because, of course, we have already set out what the citizens expect Nigeria to, you know, to provide for him. And we also expect, what Nigeria also expects its citizens to behave in a particular direction. So it's a two-way thing. All of them, uh, we are not looking at Nigeria as, a, as, as human now. The two have to come together and behave cooperatively, responsibly, honestly, for this to happen. There is no excuse for any leader to go against traffic. There is no excuse for any leader to do what is not right and go scot free. You've seen in the, in, you know, the President Bola Ametinubu has demonstrated that, you know, in the last couple of weeks, nobody is above the law. Once there appears to be any infringement in the way you do your activity, of course leadership will set in, and he has been doing that. Stakeholders in Nasarawa State have thrown their weight behind Governor Abdullahi Suleb. The state lawmakers, traditional institution, leaders from the traditional institution and local government chairman, chairman have all promised to rally around the governor in order to help him deliver the dividends of democracy to the people.
They expressed their support in separate solidarity visits to the governor at the government house in Lafia. Our correspondent Halima Gayam has the report. <laughs> Governor Abdullahi Suleh receives members of the Nasarawa State House of Assembly, led by the Speaker, Danladi Jato. They have come to felicitate with him over his victory at the Supreme Court, as they assure him of his synergy with the executive arm of the government for the implementation of laws that will benefit the people. The State Assembly, we are with you. We are fully with you. We are ready to synergize with you for the progress of the state, for what we have seen you have been doing. And to assure you that you count on us for our support all the time. The traditional rulers led by their chairman, the Emir of Lafia, Justice C. Dibagi, also visit the governor. The traditional institution in the state is also promising to support his programs and policies. We have come here to say, we just need to congratulate you and to wish you that. Wish that our state will remain united, will remain very prosperous, will continue to grow in development and well being. The 13 local government chairmen also bring the message of solidarity from the grassroots to the governor. So we are here to rejoice with the entire people of Nasarawa State and to bring the message of this happiness from the people at the grassroots that they are with you and they will continue to be with you and they will continue to be with the government and will always give the necessary support and cooperation. Governor Abdullah Isule says the success is a collective effort which he holds with great regard. This is a joy that we all share. This is as a result of the hands of the Almighty Allah. And it is also for the prayers that you have offered, the assistance that you have offered, and a lot of work that has been done, especially by our leaders, in order for us to be here. So I'm not taking it for granted the love that has been demonstrated by you to this administration and to me as a person. Stakeholders in Nasrawa State are supporting the vision of the governor, which is anchored on improving the economic growth and development of the state. Halima Gayam, Channels Television News. Governor Abdullah Hisule has flagged off the sale of fertilizer and other imputes for the 2024 dry season farming. The governor announced that the fertilizers are to be sold at a subsidized rate of 12,000 naira to ensure the availability of the product to farmers at affordable rates. As farming is the mainstay of the state's economy, the governor stated that he is committed to improving the agricultural sector. This is intended to enhance the effort of our team in farmers to improve agricultural productivity and value chain addition in Nasarawa state. It is pertinent to reiterate that government accords priority attention to agricultural sector being the major occupation of our people here in Nasarawa state. This is geared towards improving the livelihood of the teaming population to ensure optimum employment as well as achieving sustainable food security in the state and beyond. As you are aware, Nasarawa State is endowed with fertile land and good climatic conditions suitable for the production of arable crops for both domestic consumption as well as export. Our proximity to the federal capital territory and our strategic location as a link with other neighboring states put Nasarawa at an advantage position in terms of market for foods. 
Leaders in the three senatorial districts in Kwara State are urging the state government to locate the proposed University of Education in one of the three state-owned colleges of education. Each senatorial district in the state is presently hosting a state-owned college of education. However, the state government is yet to take a decision on the location of the institution. Presently, Kwara State has three colleges of education which are located in the three senatorial zones of the state, which is Oro in Kwara South, Ilorin in Kwara Central, and Lafiyoji in Kwara North. <laughs> However, the state government is planning to upgrade one of the institutions to a university of education. A naval governor also does not joke with education. He knows that that is the legacy that we have to give our coming generation. So that is why we need to establish a university basically for education. The decision of the state government is leading to clamor among leaders in the senatorial districts for the siting of the proposed university in their area. The issue of where it should be located is not too important to me. As a person, it's not too important to me. What is mostly important to me is to ensure that we have a real university of education. Whether we advocate for it to be located, being a politician representing Kwarasad, I will ad advocate it to be located in Oro. Ilone Hemirate has significant presence in Kwara Central. And I want to tell you that the two major state-owned institutions of higher learning, which is Kwara State University in Malete and Kwara State Polytechnic, are both located in the Kwara North Senatorial District, leaving Kwara Central with no uh, institution of higher learning of that status. The University of uh, Education in Kwara State, I would say straight away that this should go to Kwara North for the simple reason that Kwara North is the least developed in terms of education, in terms of uh, infrastructural development, and so on and so forth, even healthcare delivery. A visitation panel has been set up by the state government to visit the three existing colleges of education to carry out feasibility study. And there is palpable tension in Jos, the Plateau State capital, following the non-inclusion of the People's Democratic Party on the ballot papers for the rerun elections for Plateau North senatorial seat and Bassa, Jos North federal constituency, scheduled for Saturday. The intra-party advisory council in the state has rejected INEC's decision for the exclusion of one of the political parties, describing it as unreasonable and unacceptable. The Independent National Electoral Commission, led by the National Commissioner in Charge of Plateau, Kaduna, Nasarawa, and the Federal Capital Territory, Mohamed Kudu Haruna, was at the Central Bank for the distribution of sensitive and non-sensitive materials to the local government areas. The rerun elections were scheduled to hold across six local government areas of Basa, Barikin Ladi, Jos North, Jos South, Jos East, and Riyom, respectively. The, uh, the chairman of INEC made it very clear that in a rerun, the disqualified party, the candidate and the party cannot participate in that election. This is an established law. The Supreme Court had, had ruled about this in uh, Labour versus, versus INEC several years ago. And a PDP in particular was a, was a beneficiary of this several years ago in many cases like this. So this, this was made clear. We, INEC, is a law-abiding institution. We never, ever flout any law. As soon as these things uh, happened, we, we, that's why we called, as I told you, we called a meeting of uh, political parties. They were all testified. The chairman, all the parties were there at that, at, that, at that meeting in our head office. And we made this very clear. So. If the court, the, the PDP went to a court in Abuja 
and the Abuja, the Federal High Court declined jurisdiction. So what that means is that the ruling by the Court of Appeal subsists. And we have to obey the court. There is nothing we, our hands are tied, it's whatever the court says, if, whether it is right or wrong, that is what we want, unless it is set aside. The Minister of the FCT, Mr. Yesam Wike, has flagged off the construction and rehabilitation of roads in all six area councils of the FCT. I don't want to use the word acting permanent secretary. So that I don't know whether we'll have permanent secretary of FCT, but the most senior director for now, until when God will say what will happen will happen. <laughs> the health and security agencies that are here, members of the House of Assembly for River State, our dear leaders of these two great communities in the Guadalajara Area Council, our beautiful women, our dear youths, let me, on behalf of the federal capital territory and the Minister of State, thank all of you for the great honor, for the great reception you've given to us this afternoon. Let me bring felicitation for Mr. President Ahmed. Bolatribu, the President and Commander in Chief of Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who has said, I should let you know that the renewed hope agenda is still the renewed hope uh, agenda. Nobody would have thought that today this administration will focus on development of rural areas that make up FCT. FCT is not just Abuja Municipal Council. FCT is not just Guagalada. FCT also includes all these communities. As soon as the President directed, to let you know that the Renew Hope Agenda is not by mere talking. The Renew Hope Agenda is for you to see that we are ready to bring back hope to our people. We are ready to bring back hope to the rural populace. We are ready to make our people in the rural area to be comfortable. And one of those things that must make them to be comfortable is to give them access to road. The roads covered in the emergency reconstruction and rehabilitation include Baikon, Kore Ibua, Guagualada in Abuja. And that ends this edition of Newsroom Series. Thank you for watching. Join us again same time tomorrow when we bring you another edition. I am Bukola Kota. Bye for now. <laughs>